And good evening, everybody. Welcome to an all-new episode of Hollow Theater. As always, I am the one and only Dan Tartaglia, known, uh, also known as the Tartag One. Uh, joining me tonight as my co-host, it's been a while, Justin Miyashiro, uh, recently crowned uh, Tatooine Regional Champion, Justin Miyashiro. And joining us for the first time, uh, even though he's won a lot of the deck tech or the deck building challenges, is uh, David Woods. Uh, happy to have right. you guys on tonight. Yeah, yeah it has been a while. Happy to be on. So, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, you're hosting the Evan Four Regionals in a couple of weeks. So, we're going to talk a little bit about that, talk a little bit about the OCS at 19. But first, being that this is your first time on and everything let's talk a little bit about you david uh so how did you get into this game so i i got i kind of got the same intro a lot of people i got uh the two-player premiere intro game from my mm -hmm. uncle for christmas in 96 um okay. and you know cr christmas eve we did that side of the family we sit down my dad's you know got the cards out reading the rules you know like half hour into it he's just like well we're gonna do this another day <laughs> sets it down and uh like a couple months later i one of my friends at school has these star wars cards i'm like oh i have some of those and then he kind of taught me how to play and okay started going to tournaments in tennessee and knoxville and uh all I ever did was local local tournaments. And I always did terribly. Like if I if I ever went two and two, it was like it was like a great weekend. I was like so excited, <laughs> but I was also very young. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with going two and two in a tournament. I mean, I feel good about going uh, four and four in a, a major. So definitely. So you so how long have you been playing? So you say you got the the two player set in '96. Uh, so how long have you been playing so, the game for? So I played through Tatooine. Um, so I didn't play any Coruscant Theater Reflections three. Um, the local group kind of all quit at the same time. Everybody, pretty much everyone, started playing Lord of the Rings. So then I played that for the next several years, and uh, I went to. I went to DecipherCon in 2002 for and played Lord of the Rings. I didn't do okay. well, but uh, but I was there for anyone else who was there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, then, uh, yeah. So then, after didn't I didn't even know the PC existed. Um, okay. Like when I was a kid, like I've, I mean, I was there playing Lord of the Rings, but I still didn't ever connect the dots that the PC was a thing or that it was there, and. Uh, a few years ago, I guess four years ago now, I saw an article about the history of Decipher on Facebook in a Game of Thrones LCG group because I had been playing that. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, Decipher, I'll read that. Okay. And uh, so I read it and it talked about this thing called the PC. So I Googled it and found the website and used the player locator and found uh, John, one of the guys here in Norfolk and Messages oh, okay. in. I was like, "Hey, want to hang out and play cards?" <laughs> Not creepy at all. <laughs> so, and then I've been playing since then. Awesome. So, I mean, I'm kind of glad to see that you uh, you found us again and everything. Uh, so, now that you're back in the game and everything, uh, how long have you been playing like on Gimp and uh, like? Uh, Super Have creepy. you done any real? Like, have you had any more? Uh, had different any? Uh, any other experience besides uh, playing in locals? So I didn't play, basically just played with the local guys here that first year. And then of course COVID started mm -hmm. and I started working from home. I started playing a lot of GIMP, <laughs> a lot. Um, Cause I was working from home and I, you know, I get off work early in the afternoons so I could play a couple hours before I go get the kids and, squeeze some in during the day too and uh so then i went my uh, first major so was went. nationals last year so that was my first uh first major and then i went to the npc this year oh nice so how did you like going to nationals and then the npc oh it was great it was a lot i mean 
was a you know you go play cards and games all weekend and don't have kids and it's great <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh you so you've been playing for a while obviously so over the years what kind of like decks and stuff like what the themes deck uh, objectives whatever have you uh grown to like I always, always loved Cloud City. Like, Dark Deal Troopers was my favorite deck when I was a kid. And okay. I've tried to continue playing that now. So that's my, so I like the Tadigwat and I like my, my Storm Troopers in there. So more, pretty, more folk, doesn't actually play the Dark Deal card now, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure same, I was on the receiving end. I'm pretty sure I'm the, I was on the receiving end of a deal, uh, a deal is deal trooper beat down at one point in your hand. <laughs> It uh, you know, it can if you don't have a Hujix, it's uh, bad news. <laughs> so what about for Light Side? Are you playing like uh, Quiet Mining Colony? I, so I've ne I never like was able to really like figure out how to play that one very well. Um, I really liked the Legends. So like Han Solo is always my favorite character, and his Blaster is like my favorite card. So. Okay. I played Legend Blasters with Hans Blaster for a long time, but since the objective got changed, I hadn't uh, hadn't uh, done so well with it. So um, back in the day, my favorite objective was probably Profit, because you know it's just fun play all the play all the mains. You know, hey, centered uh, around Han Solo. I, mean, I know there's a few players who like Profit. I know Tom Hayden has played it over the years. Uh, Jared, it's one of his favorite decks, so uh, m maybe we'll see a helper or two for it eventually. There you uh, go. I I know Drew came on a couple weeks ago and was talking about like one of the most request the most requested things out there. Profit helper. There you go, man. I tried so hard in the Jawas in love mm -hmm. year year before last to win that someone who loves you <laughs> virtual card i did every single achievement thing you could do to get as many drawings as possible but didn't didn't work out for me <laughs> so that that's one thing i noticed that you like to play not to necessarily do like to uh, win in an event, but you like to challenge yourself by doing like the little things. Like you always seem to want to play in like the deck building challenges or and like those little things that uh, Kendall does with like all the Java format, like all the little uh, achievements, essentially. Uh, yep. What makes you want to do those? I don't know. It's just fun to play around with cards and mixes things up because it's not stuff you don't use normally. The uh... The one, the one for this Jawa League. I'm tied for first. Fungineer came back, came back and tied me for uh, <laughs> 61 points for first place. So I think the next highest is like 20 something. <laughs> so how are you gonna beat him? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta, I actually gotta start planning. Uh, I guess we got a few days left for the Jawa League, but yeah, do you have more, I, do you I have more games still. No, I'm done with my games. I really, really wanted to feed someone to the Rancor, and I played the deck. Tw I played. I played my deck three times, one practice game, and I, I fed Brad Kipple's Ray to the Rancor, and then I played it <laughs> twice in the league, and I couldn't feed someone in either. I lost both games, and I couldn't feed someone, and I was just like, oh, but I got a lot of the other achievements, so that's, that's still good. got plenty of points. I'm pretty sure I have one, because I, <laughs> I played I played four Jawas in one game. Oh, there you go. Well, you get four points for each Jawa. Oh, okay. I have four points then. There you, there you go. go. I mean, I don't <laughs> think I have any. I mean, I haven't really been keeping track. I mean, maybe I should go back and like review some of the games. Yeah, you could you could do some of them accidentally. Like one of them, like you get five points if uh, Kylo kills Han with the lightsaber. So that's like that could just randomly happen in a game. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i i think i was playing like weird like i don't even remember i, I was playing a lot of wap mm. like i i got i got that one and i was playing hunt down epic dueling to convert luke <laughs> and so my first game i played diplo both times with it so i was very nervous to start mm -hmm. and the first game i didn't he never played luke so i was like Arr! but i did get to kill uh han with kylo Okay. So the second game, I epic dueled and converted Luke, and then it was really tight. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he uh, he ended up deploying Obi Wan, 
and I I moved over and epic dueled him to finish to win the game. Okay, so that was fun. <laughs> now was that a, was that a, a another achievement? Uh, the epic dueling of Obi Wan as well? Or, no, no, didn't get Luke? anything for that one. But converting a character counted, so. Well, I mean, at least they converted the character instead of just th throwing away the force. Yeah. So neat thing, Rebel Scout Luke. When you convert, so he gets power plus one for each dark Jedi. When mm -hmm. you convert him, he automatically becomes power seven because he himself is a dark Jedi. <laughs> okay. Pretty neat. <laughs> Learn something new tonight. I mean, that came, that came up when I did that at Worlds. Ah, nice. You did that at Worlds. Yep. That is awesome. Why, why were you playing a bad deck? <laughs> um, because it was super awesome against Jedi Luke decks, and I did beat both the Jedi Luke decks. <laughs> okay, I, that, that's... I I even beat Yavin Four Ops with that deck somehow. Nice. Was it Bat Mouse? No, it was Matt Scott. He was in the finals. Nice. All what? you need is all you need is for them to to miss their first oh. three attempts to uh oh. to liberate systems. Oh. Oh. Okay, so That's we have rough. an update in the chat. Uh Crazy Carl is saying that uh we might have just found the tiebreaker for Fun Engineer converting Luke. So converting Luke Rebel Scout. Yep. Plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Let's see. So in the chat, uh, uh, Joker King, uh, he points out that you have the coolest card organization setup. Care to explain? Uh, so, so I just finished it. I, I was actually, I'm actually working, uh, been typing up a little, uh, uh, like forum post to put on the forums for, I built a, so like card storage cabinets, like, like having something nice to mm -hmm. put your cards in. Like I could not find anything on the internet that wasn't like, a thousand dollars or more that look good so it's like cheap plastic boxes white cord cardboard boxes which is what i've always used or like thousands of dollars so it's driving me crazy so i uh i i guess i can shoot my camera so i got that thing right there i okay. just finished building it it's uh it's three um ikea helmer cabinets and then i put like a countertop on the top and bottom and mounted them all together huh. um and the drawers are like just the right height for cards to s sit vertically so you can do three rows of cards in each drawer and the drawers pull all the way out which is important for being able to access the cards um so i'm, I'm doing a little write-up on it and i'm gonna put it on the forums for anyone who's interested but few a few hundred dollars and some time you can get something that looks decent and okay. and that that'll hold like over 50,000 cards. I don't have 50,000 cards, but I wanted extra storage for other stuff too, so That's fair. Like I have been looking for something. I know Matt Carulli, he's currently making his own thing too, but he's like I don't want to make it for anybody and I'm just like, dude, come on. Be yeah, I saw I saw I it might have been him, but I saw one a post on the forums where someone like handmade this like beautiful like dresser cabinet thing yeah. and i was extremely jealous but i do not have the skills to accomplish that <laughs> i know that I think, feeling i think the coolest one that i've seen or heard of of people just picking up is when libraries would get rid of their uh yeah. like mm -hmm. card catalog things mm -hmm. I, I can't remember if matt sperling said he had one or that he was looking at getting one but yeah. um but yeah, that's a pretty cool one that I imagine you can pick up for not too much as long as you're right. like getting it secondhand. Right, yeah. but you got to finding it because like I feel like you have to yeah. be physically at wherever you're gonna get it. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe yeah. you could find one, but if you bought one on like eBay or something like that, it would be expensive. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, those things are huge. They're. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... So let's talk about the Yavin 4 Super Weekend that is coming up in a couple of weeks. So uh, for those who don't know, like uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had multiple regionals. Uh, this past weekend was the Nalhada Super Super Weekend, as well as, uh, I think, what, Tatooine Regionals? I mean, who went to that? <laughs> but in, in a few weeks, uh, you're going to be hosting not only... Uh, the 
Gavin for regionals, but Virginia States as well. Yep. G- going to do it on the same weekend. Hopefully we can get a few more people, a little bit bigger draw for having both, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but should be good. We're definitely excited. I, uh, is a group effort getting it set up here. John, John McFarland, he, he got the uh, locations lined up for us. So that was a, that was a huge help. And, uh, I'm trying to, I ordered prize kits and trying to do a little of the promotion stuff. And okay. so, so we're excited. I, I, I noticed that the, the right off the bat, like the regional is at tower of games in Virginia beach. And then States is at elation brewing company in Norfolk. Uh, how far are they apart? <laughs> it's like 20 something minutes apart. Okay. Um, so that, so our, the place we live is kind of a, it's a strange area. It's like the Hampton roads area and it's seven cities and okay. they're all just crammed in together. So like I live in Norfolk. I, my work is in the place I'm employed in Portsmouth, Virginia. My wife works in Chesapeake, Virginia. So it, it's like kind of, it's like 30 minutes to get to any one city yeah. of all these surroundings so they're all just kind of jammed together so oh wow the the different cities is misleading in the distance they are apart from each other okay so what kind of prep did, like how was it hard to uh set all of this up for the same weekend um i don't john did most of the location stuff but uh <laughs> we did we did have a hard time find so we wanted to do one at like a game store and support the local game store. And then we wanted to do one at like a brewery or something like that, just for fun for us. Um, and so a lot of the breweries were going to charge a lot of money. Really? So we, he, we spent a lot of time talking to a di- bunch of different breweries and trying to find something that had the space to set up the tables. And we found one that was a good price and we were about to book that, but then they were like, they wouldn't let us bring in, and an extra like two tables into the room so but we the place we ended up getting it worked out pretty well because the place we ended up getting isn't charging us anything so okay i will i will be buying quite a few beers to (laughs) feel good about it so (laughs) so uh being that you're gonna uh providing like uh, the beers and everything at the brewery uh for those who are going to this, uh, are there any good like hotels or anything in the area for people to uh, spend the nights and stuff? So there's ton of hotels. Depends what you want to do. Like if you want, you can stay like at the oceanfront because there's a bunch of different beaches in a couple of the different cities. So you could stay at a beach hotel, or you could stay in, you could go um, cheaper route and stay in Chesapeake that's kind of in the middle between the two locations mm-hmm. and get those hotels would generally be cheaper or you could stay in downtown Norfolk, kind of like the, the biggest like downtown city area around. Um, okay. So there's a lot of different options. I think uh, Bill is staying in Chesapeake kind of in between the two places. Um, so who are you all like expecting to show up? Uh, you said Bill, are you talking like Taco Bill Kafer? Taco Bill is coming. Uh-oh. I know he's trying to get trying to trying to get you to come down carpool with them from there. He should is. do it. And I think he's I think he was trying to pull Greg Shaw down too. Maybe I think no. it was a maybe. No. All right. Well, no. I'm saying I'm still the reason I'm saying I like. Don't get me wrong. I love Greg. He's a great guy and everything. But let somebody else win an event here and there. <laughs> well, you know, the Virginia States can just be about who plays the best uh, intoxicated. You know. I like that. We'll see. Um, and then, so we've got, we've got five guys that live locally and then two that are going to come that are like local ish. We got a guy in Williamsburg and a guy in Richmond that are going to come. So we got seven like local, local ish guys. Um, Jared, uh, Consker is, he said he's come. He's probably going to come up for one of the two days. Um, oh, no. pro- probably not both, but he'll probably be there for one of them. Oh no. Because <laughs> I know he's driving from I think what North Carolina. North Carolina, and I think we have there's we got a few like interest, you know, questions from North Carolina guys and some guys up. I think there's a guy in Northern Virginia that expressed some interest, but so we'll see. 
see how many people end up showing. And I think Tom Hayde was a maybe. He might try and make it down for one of them. Uh, so like we'll see. I, come on. Like I said, we we need to let other people win this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think can... I think Tom won both of the regionals that I went that I went to over the last couple of years. Well, the answer is you should just fly to Colorado next time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I did that once and it was great. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, I, I'm willing to go to Colorado if the price is right. So. Yep. We're good. Oh, wow. Uh, I just looked at the pri- like the distance. This is a seven hour drive for me, sir. Uh, you got this. That's not. <laughs> That's like half an hour less than I spent going to Nebraska. You're fine. Well, yeah, you. But you would, <laughs> why? Why would you go to Nebraska? Because, um, because Eric Garcho runs a good tournament. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. The prize support he put out for that thing looked insane. <laughs> okay, yeah, so what great. kind of prize support are you going to uh, put put up for all these people to to incentivize them to go into this tournament? So, well, we got the, you know, the standard prize uh, league kit or not league kits, prize states and regionals kits. Um, We uh, we've been working on and we just I just ordered them uh, yesterday. We we got some unofficial. uh, We got a we got a play mat, a Yavin 4 play mat, uh, three foot by three foot play mat to give away. Um, And we're we're working on a few other little things to try and. uh, add to the pot so we'll see we'll see how much of it works out well i don't know if he's watching but jared make it so that this one uh yavin four gets some special prize support to incentivize this tournament <laughs> so so what kind of like uh yes a dark side reflections uncut sheet to get <laughs> yeah. to go to this thank you joker king man i have to start getting serious if we got one of those well yeah i i need one <laughs> so you'll have a dark side reflection sheet but it'll be on an 8 by 11 just print it out from... <laughs> there you go <laughs> i mean if i could i could do those myself i could do like 11 by 17s Come on. so what kind of like what what kind of like meta are you expecting for it like i know we just got set 19 uh are you expecting to see a lot of like uh zero hour th- uh the thrawn objective or are you expecting like the normal communings and old allies and all the boring stuff that we've been playing <laughs> for the last couple months? I'd say we'll probably have a lot of the normal stuff. Oh, we could get we could get some sprink some other stuff sprinkled in. I know uh, some of our our local guy. We got a, you know one of our guys likes QMC and AOBS. We've got uh, Map. One guy plays Map a lot. We got played a bunch of games with them with commuting qui-gon commuting they played a bunch of that um what do you play so the the decks i've been playing the most lately are no idea and a uh malls chambers ssa you've been playing the bat mall deck so mine's not like his my mine uh i like uh it's play a bunch of so a bunch of emperors, a lot of high destiny cards, three Sith Furies, um, okay. and then I do Vader's tie. And I recently switched from uh, Saber one to Slave one um, because okay. I just lose to Brad Kipple playing Diplo every time, and it drives me crazy. I can't draw more than one Battle Destiny at Tatooine. <laughs> so I've been trying. I've been trying out Slave one as my second second ship okay. in that deck it's been all right I, I i will say this so far the chat is agreeing saying that your version is better <laughs> well i think the destiny is probably higher yeah but, you I know, mean, when you throw in a lot is, of sixes and it helps when bat mouse is playing stuff like has uh what abyss and a day long remembered and all that weird bat mouse stuff i think everybody's but, gonna agree and say that your version is better <laughs> The, the droid rex thing was fun though i, yeah. I like i like it was a cool idea it was different i'll give him that. <laughs> but of course i mean bat mouse did shed a tear when uh, chris kelly and all the design and everybody nerfed uh, ssa so you can play it yeah but, okay so yeah uh 
No abyss. Yeah, uh, we got people in the chat saying no abyss makes it your that your version's better. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, again, Gavin for regionals and uh, Virginia states is September tenth uh, and the eleventh. Yep. Uh, if you're not going to Euros, Euros is going to be the same weekend. Go to this. Like, why not? Go play some yeah, in-person right. Star Wars CCG. Way closer than Europe. I mean, depends on where you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. For right. anyone in the States, it's got to be closer. Well, probably. Eh. Probably. I don't know. Like, if you're in Hawaii. No. Hawaii is not that far away, Dan. You, you, you should know that. I, yes, that's what I'm saying. Hawaii is an eight-hour flight. So how far is it from Hawaii to Germany going the other way? More. <laughs> I want to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, okay, so really quick, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the OCS and what else is going on in the Star Wars uh, universe right now. Or the uh... So, again, with the uh, right now... Uh, Connor Britton, Justin Desai, and Paul Myers are all 10 and 2 this month. Uh, C. Brony is right there at 10 and 1. Uh, looking at, again, at the. Oh, you can't, you can't stop there because Corin at 9 and 3 is next on Corrin the list. Corin at 9 and 3. Yeah, but he's not going to qualify. <laughs> uh, yeah, but come on. <laughs> and then uh, looking at the scoreboard that Joe Olson does, uh, takes care of, uh, Brony again at 10 and 1. Uh, Justin Branch at seven and zero, oh, and Brad Kipple at six and one. Brad has qualified uh, previously. Speaking of which, uh, if you want to go ahead and take a look at all those who qualified so far, uh, Justin Desai, uh, Bill Kafer, Bastian Winklehouse, Zemowit, uh, Zemowit, uh, Drew Lichtenstein, Brad Kipple, uh, Gavin. Eric, uh, Eric, and uh, right now we have our at-large bid is Matt Harrison Trainer. They have all qualified so far for the OCS, uh, the top sixteen. So uh, this month, uh, if Connor can hold out, he should be able to get in. And uh, like I said, uh, it's going to come down to probably Paul and uh, Steve Baroni. Yeah, I'm looking at it like if I mean obviously if Steve wins he'll be he'll be in for sure. Um, Paul has pretty shaky ground because his SOS is really weak. Yeah, thirty five. Yeah. Thirty five is well, thirty five is pretty weak compared to the other. Like if Kessling wins his last one, he'll probably end up above Paul because he's a, he's nine and two. Um, Wayne mm -hmm. Collin could win three and would probably end up above him. So, if if Paul's the one on the bubble, then it uh, then the field widens out a lot. Uh, if Steve True. wins his if Steve wins his last one, then it's going to be pretty tough because uh, Stubley's SOS is quite strong. So I yeah. don't expect that anybody would really be able to catch him. Uh, it would really come down to somebody beating him on record, which. Uh, doesn't look super likely we're pretty pretty short on days in the month now so well i mean there's seven days left i mean it it ends next wednesday maybe we'll have the uh we'll be able to announce who's our uh, ocs call our second qualifier for this month on wednesday i mean that'd be kind of interesting and okay so on top of the ocs the Jawa Brawl is still going on. Uh, you have four days left in the Jawa Brawl. Uh, Joe Olson and uh, Timo Dussel both sitting at 11 and 1, but don't look out because Brad Kipple is sitting at 10 and 1. So if Brad it would uh, win his last game, he would overtake Timo and emerge victorious. And uh, but right now it looks like it's going to be Timo and Joe in our final confrontation. And then the other thing that's going on right now is the V Set Nineteen release party. Uh, that is going on until September seventh. 
and currently Tom and Timo are sitting in the first the first two spots as they have played both their 20 games. Uh, Catwall and Jared also played their 20 games. So Tom is sitting at 17 and three, Timo 10 and 15 or 15 and five. And then looking on down a little bit, uh, Chris Hall sitting at seven and zero, oh, and Edward Sheehan sitting at six and one. Seventeen and three is gonna be tough to catch. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, oh that's yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, agree. I'm, I'm way behind. I've played zero games in the nineteen release party. Please, uh, let's see. I gotta get on it. I am four and four. I am three and one, and one of those is because I played it at work today. And I had to step away. <laughs> yeah. Like I, work it was dead, and then my boss was like, "Hey, I need you to do this one random thing." That's <laughs> I, I thought it was busy work. So this does run until September seventh, so True. a little bit longer than the Jawa. Um, but, Twenty mm-hmm. is so. I guess I have twelve games left to this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's right. I'm gonna have to start burning next week. And last but not least, just announced the Road to Worlds Gemp fundraiser event. Uh, that will start up here after everything, after all these, like the Super Weekend, after uh, the Brawl and the uh, August OCS finishes. Uh, but again, like last year, uh, the Jawa, uh, the uh, advocates and everybody are supporting uh, their Road to Worlds and everything. Again, Worlds is October 13th through the 16th. Uh, all you got to do is go on, click the link, go to the URL, uh, donate minimum $5, suggested is $10. Uh, this will be going on from September 21st through October 12th. Uh, the prizes are pretty loaded, so and a lot of stuff is going to be given out for it. So make sure you guys check this out. And if you're looking at the prizes, like I said, participation is pretty loaded. Loaded. Uh, a lot of foils going to be giving out stickers, uncut sheets. Performance-wise, uh, you have a choice of a sealed Japanese Premier two-player deck or a sealed EPP Han pack. Uh, winner will ch- uh, the runner up. Uh, so the winner will be able to choose. Runner up will get the other one, and then again more foils and so forth. Again. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty neat neat uh, neat thing that they put out. I I just read that early, this afternoon. Yeah, a, it's it's a cool way to kind of get some extra money for the PC and then get get rid of some of the uh, old older older tournament foils, so people who yeah. didn't get a chance to get them can grab some on this. And then again, you have them for regionals and uh, Virginia states, uh, September 10th through the 11th. Same date is uh, the European Championship. So if you're going to, if you're, uh, that again is September 9th through the 11th. Uh, day one is a team tournament. Day two on Saturday is the the actual, the, the main event and so forth. Right now, uh, looks like we have 40 people signed up, including two Americans. Uh, nice. And uh, we got Bastion going. Uh, Timo, Dussel, Justin Branch, a lot of big name Europeans are going to be going into this. So uh, definitely pay attention to that on that weekend. And again, Worlds is October 13th through the 16th. Right now we have uh, 10 players signed up, including myself and Justin. So uh, if you're going to go to Worlds, sign up for it. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, I need to do that. I'm planning on going though. Atlanta is not too far from you, right? So yeah, we'll we'll yeah. be we, the Norfolk crew will be driving, carpooling, we'll be crammed in one car and uh getting down there. That that is going to be wow. a lot of a lot of poker to play. <laughs> well, uh, show up early. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, fun stuff that weekend, and then. Uh, like there's going to be a lot going on. We're going to make it kind of like what the Europeans do with their world events. So we're going to try and do a lot of like fun stuff besides playing Star Wars cards. Someone's yes. going to have a bunch of stickers on their back. Is that? Yes. <laughs> Somebody will. 
<laughs> maybe a bat mouse. I don't know. But definitely go to worlds. It's going to be a blast. Okay. So it's that time of the night. Let's go ahead and get into uh, our swing and a miss. And uh, it's a hit questions. We got four questions for tonight. Uh, so our first one, let's talk a little bit about the Yavin 4 regionals slash states. Super weekend funness. Uh, the first one, Yavin 4 Super Weekend will have at least 15 people both days attend it. 15 unique people? Or 15 like... unique people. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. you can't. I mean, <laughs> I, cloning is not a thing yet. Well, it's two events. So, you know, it could be like, <clears throat> if it was like 12 and 7, then that would be 19. But if there was like six overlap, then it would not be, it would not get to 15. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, we have what? 10 people signed up confirmed, correct, Dave? So we'll start with it's, Dave. Go ahead. I, I'm going to say hit because I want it to be. It's going <laughs> to be right on the edge, I think. Okay. I, I, we will for sure, I think we will for sure have over 10, but whether we can hit 15 or go over 15, uh, it's going to be a lot of last minute. I got, uh, there's a bunch of maybes out there. So there are it's pretty, pretty hinging on, uh, pretty hinging on them. I, I misunderstood the question. Um, cause so, I thought you were talking about just one of the events. Um, uh, so I was going to say miss on the grounds that more than 15 would be more than all but two of the regionals that have happened so far this year. And one of those was Naboo was the UK regionals, which has a lot of euros in it. Yeah. So even that one's like, you know, that one had 20, had 21 players, hmm. but they're not all, they're, they're not all from the UK. They're not all from the same region. I don't think. Yeah. Um, so. Hmm. I'm trying to remember everybody that David mentioned when we were talking about it earlier. So uh, I think, well, right now, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight people who he listed on the forums. Okay. John McFarland, Chad Dixon, David Woods, Vinny Rossi, Casey Johnson, Bill Kafer, Nick, I'm not going to pronounce your name, and Jonathan, <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce your name. Okay. On top of that, Tom Hayes. Potentially Hayd, Tom Hayes is nine. Jared Consker. Mm -hmm. Jared Consker's 10. Maybe Shaw is 11. Shaw. And then like one other. Dan? Right. Dan? Come on. Right. 12. So, <laughs> so uh, I'll, Pat I'll, Johnson, I'll... who won the event last year, said he has to defend it. So that's 13. Oh, nice. So I'm going to say miss, but I think it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be miss, I think, but it'll be like 14 or, or maybe 15. Exactly. I don't, it's not going to miss by much. Okay. Uh, I said at least 15. So 15 is like greater than or equal to. Oh, okay. I'm going to still say miss and say 14. Uh, but, but... I'm, I'm going to say hit. My heart and my head are saying hit on this one. Go. It's, at a, it's at a freaking brewery. Yeah, Virginia States, man. It's Virginia States is at a brewery. I, I live a mile from that brewery, so no matter how much I drink, I can stumble home. I was going to say, so what you're, <laughs> so I'm hearing that you're offering up some couches to people who I, are drunk. I have, I have couch and air mattress. Yeah, ooh. If, if you desire. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we might so have we to only, had, we only had a game store, not a brewery, so that that was our our fatal flaw. <laughs> okay. Question number two. At least two people will play either Zero Hour or the New Throne Objective at the Yavin 4 Super Weekend. I should have put this just at Regionals. Uh, we're just going to go with just at Regionals. I think just at Regionals, I'm going to go miss. If it were both, I think I think I would go hit. But if just Regionals, I'll go miss. So I read that as two copies between, let's say it's 15. Two copies between thirty decks. Yeah, I would. I'd say hit. Okay. I, you know, it's true. Just messing around with them. I mean, the zero hour seems really fun. Like, I, I don't know how good it is just yet, but it seems fun. It's different. Um, it can do a lot of damage if you're able to, uh, to flip and stay flip. And the ability to subtract two from a destiny, a weapon destiny, is good. Um, and then having a rescue in the clouds and it yeah. is really good so i mean they had two that they had 
to uh, set 19 decks at Nahada Regionals, and they only had six people. There you go. Oh, well. <laughs> granted, it was... Well, maybe it was, I should change my mind. <laughs> granted, it was one person who had Lothal on both sides. Okay. But... Mm. All and that's takes, why I said all two it takes people. is one. Oh, two people. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, they do seem fun, though. So. They do seem fun. I, I haven't tried the Thrawn one yet. The Thrawn one just seems like it's very... That might not be a good one for the Virginia States yeah. when you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, you have to stay on your game with the Thrawn one, it feels like. I think I, I think they were both released at a really good level because they're both interesting. They're both that they like it's clear that they're both doing something, but it also feels like, well, this is not obviously like the Thrawn one's like, well, this is not obviously better than Walkers or Sikva or Rops or whatever. Uh, and then the, the zero hours like, well, this is not obviously better than Diplo or OA or no idea. So it's like, all right, you got to like, all right, we got to dig for why do I play zero hour instead of OA? Why do I play Thrawn instead of Verge? Right. Like yeah. you, have, you have to dig for those reasons. Um, but I think that's a good starting spot. Who right? plays it's, it's, Verge? <laughs> I mean, the winner. Besides of... Brad, besides uh, so Brian the, the the winner of now Hunter Rachel's is playing Verge. So, uh, you know. no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but what has he done for us lately? Win now Hunter Rachel. <laughs> you see, it was right there. <laughs> so, okay. So I, I'm going to say hit on this one. Uh, I, I think it's it, it's a fun deck. I think Zero Hour is really fun. The Thrawn one, it, it, it has a lot of potential, I feel like. You just have to you have to make it like I haven't seen a really optimal build for it, but I think there is one that people haven't really established. So, but we'll see. I mean, you never know what the Euros are going to play. Unfortunately, it's the same weekend though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to question number three. This one is or we're going to change gears just slightly. Uh, Tom Struther, uh, he's uh, Gimp Tom. His Destiny 9 deck will continue to see play and win. Uh, he's been playing it a lot, including in this the, the V-Set, uh, the 19 stuff, the OCS. Yeah, looking at the 19, he's 17 and 3. If he played it in 10 of those games, seems like it's uh, still going strong. I didn't lose him in that event with it, but I have lost to it recently with it. Like <laughs> same. He 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 showed he showed the course on stuff. I'm like, oh well, I cut my Grimtosh and my fifth shuffle, so you're gonna beat me. It just depends on when. And <laughs> yeah, and he did. So um, I would say, I mean, as long as Tom keeps playing, I'll say hit. Uh, <laughs> like, um, I don't. Do I think it's going to win at Worlds? I don't know. Is Tom coming to Worlds? If he, if he's not, then. I would say probably not, just because I don't really expect anybody else is going to bring the deck. Uh, it's really his. It, it, it's a it's it's a deck that he plays better than anybody else that I've seen play it. Yeah. Uh, and the 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 errata to drop um, really I think push people away from it because it was you know it's the sort of thing where dark is so open. And it's like well if this deck isn't head and shoulders above everything else. Mm -hmm. then maybe I'll just play something else that I have more experience with or whatever. So. All right. I, at this point, like, if you're going to play a deck that does, like, weird manipulation, I feel fine, like, this one, it's good. But like you said, it's really good in Tom's hands. Everybody else, I don't know, just doesn't have any luck with it. Just play the deck that you played at Nationals. That bring up a for me deck where you can just oh. draw the droids and making I, them Destiny six point five. That's I did like that. That was in the almost in the a nine. I mean, I want to bring a before me duel because of uh, because of BB nine e. Nice. There you go. Because uh, it because it got to be a one and a half in order to lose the duel, and then it got to be a six and a half in order to turn loot. So ah. yeah. Nice. And, and I mean, with Lord Maul, it's a seven and a half. Like. And you can get rid of Jedi with like, you can get force easily... lightning. Well, no, you can't force lightning Jedi with them. Or no, you can. You can lightning, force lightning is plus one. Yeah, yeah. So you can. You can force yep. lightning Jedi with BB ninety. Yeah, like you can force lightning them. You can uh, choke Luke with BB ninety. 
I mean, I did that in the game a couple days ago. Like, well, the Brigham has a hard time doing that because you just capture. I guess they give you loot, right? But, well, no, no, no. I didn't say Hitco. I'm saying. Oh sure, sure. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't they just give you? Like, they you they can't give really you. Well, <laughs> I mean, not if they give you a Leia first. Sure. But semantics. But I'm just saying, like, it, it's a, it's the same thing. And you don't have to like worry about like all that weird stuff that like h- how to you don't have to learn how to t- play Tom's deck. <laughs> I mean, amazingly listening to Tom talk about it on his uh, interview with uh, with Kendall, it actually seemed really straightforward. It was like, yeah. oh, you just draw until you activate your whole reserve deck, and then you just put a bunch of sevens at the bottom. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> in that case, <laughs> yeah, but then, yeah. And then you just make sure you play. Uh, you don't play uh, Matt Wadden, who's playing Grimtosh. <laughs> He's never gonna live that down. As long <laughs> as I know, I mean, I'm, as long as I, if if I can keep it going, I'm gonna keep that going. I don't even think it was Matt that I saw. But I think the yeah, worst Grimtosh I no no no. So the worst Grimtosh I saw was I think on camera at Worlds, when the map Troopers was still a thing. Um somebody played use Grimtosh on their opponent's turn to bring down their hand to eight. And then on their turn played escape pot to get that same Grimtosh and lost Grimtosh and hit like five cards. Oh, mm. after they had used Grimtosh, it's like, Oh, okay. Like oh. <laughs> it's like three, four sort of troopers and two guns. Like, really? <laughs> okay. I guess we're, uh, I guess just we're done. <laughs> it's like, I guess we're done here. <laughs> but... Oh, Yeah, that's my goal for Worlds is to get uh, Matt Watt in the sign of Grimtosh for me. <laughs> it's one of my war- goals. I should have got that at Course Hunt Regionals when he beat me. I wasn't thinking. Okay, last question of the evening. And Dave, this is all about you. Oh, man. When the deck building challenges return, you will win at least half of them. We're going to start I do- with you. Say me or Justin? You. Me. Uh, I mean, I want to say hit. Um, could be a little more difficult this this go around because, uh, you know, I'm going into the work office half of the days of the week. <laughs> do a lot of do a lot of deck building during uh, meetings. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, I'll certainly go for it. So I'm going with hit. I got this is my fall of a legend shirt from a deck building challenge. Scott's the, was whatever whatever one. I think I I had to win a game with the city in the clouds objective. So I, I, think, I think that got me the shirt. Yep. <laughs> uh, what do you say, Justin? I'll say hit. I mean, I have won a couple of deck building challenges. You have, but but it was always like a lot. A lot of times it was it, it was just always a race. It's like, oh, uh, David already got it, so I guess we'll <laughs> let's not worry about it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, sometimes sometimes they were ones who was like, "Oh well, I'm gonna play Jawas anyway." Cause, so, like, <laughs> so, uh, so, so sometimes they're easy, but other times it was like, "Oh, I have to build like a whole new deck for this." Like, all right, I'll do that maybe <laughs> later. And then it's like, oh, it's like, oh, David did it a week, like a weekend or something. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, to be fair, I had to change up the rules and everything because of David. <laughs> like literally i had to start off with like okay i banned dave from winning a lot of like once or uh, a few of them and then i was like break. okay yeah. just to be fair like you, you, every everybody can enter and then you, you once you're entered we pick a person to win it but yeah <laughs> hey those deck building challenges taught me that san carlos are actually like kind of okay if you're playing a full jawa agent and court deck <laughs> when are we gonna like um well, i mean now we that we have the jawa utini card build jawa's uh agents of the court throw a bunch of jawas at your opponent just non-stop there thought about it thought about it i mean why I, not? I don't i don't know what magnetic suction tube does but i consider it. <laughs> it does something I've thought about looking at it. Let's, let's... Is is it even in Gimp? That's probably why I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because like no, I, it's, I've it's in never, there. I, I've never realized is it in Gimp? 
Yeah, so it sucks it sucks up characters and relocates them to the interior sandcrawler site. Huh. Control phase. So you know, that's kinda that's okay. kind of it could be useful for like beatdowns at the sandcrawler site. Like that was one thing in the when I was trying to feed people to the Rancor, trap door, you move one of their characters to the Rancor pit during your deploy phase. And oh. it's it's Destiny plus two. If you're flipped, it you don't even draw Destiny. It just sends them there. So even if you don't have a Rancor there, you can still play it to ditch one of their characters out of the audience chamber. That's yeah, a good like idea. You, you can't deploy to the Sandcrawler site, though. Oh. Uh, you can't? There's no Force icons. Oh. Uh, spies. Sure. But I spies. guess it sucks them from the site the Sandcrawler's at, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it would have to be a, a battle at the site with the Sandcrawler, and you're just removing one of their characters. Yeah. Of course, setting, it has to be. You're setting them to used, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Oh, or just... owner's use file, yeah. That's weird. Could be fun. I don't know, like, making your. Uh... I don't know. We got we got to get Jawas better. Jawas and Tuscans. Like I played against a Tuscan deck. That play, uh, a guy played it as his uh, uh, my kind of scum agent, and he just threw a bunch of uh, Tuscan with uh, blaster rifles at me, and I'm just like, this is annoying. This is really <laughs> annoying. Yeah, I man. I mean, I don't know, man. My light side Jawa brawl opponents would probably say Jawas are good enough. <laughs> well we'll see like the, I'll, the the title of the deck that i played all six dark side games in that event was wado java vehicles nice i went six and eight that deck. nice <laughs> okay i want to see this deck now that is awesome <laughs> okay before we continue talking about jawas and tuscans and wados and random bad decks that's that's a different show uh, let's go ahead and get our challenge in. So we've been doing a lot of the lore challenge. So in the last couple of weeks, we changed over to something different. Uh, it is now the, it, all it is, is what card is underneath this V card? That's all it is. I'm expecting to be bad at this. Well, do you Luke's, know Luke Skywalker? That's Luke Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So, give me one of those. Give me a half slip. The nice thing is, <laughs> uh, the nice thing is, uh, you can actually look at the screen. I'll tell you what the card is. Because right, and... if you have the image from Gemp, it doesn't have the underlying card on it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So it ha yeah, it just doesn't have the underlying card in it, but. <clears throat> It will be, it, you can sh see what the card is. Uh, let me pull up my window just so I don't screw this up. I'm going to screw this up. Okay, your card, and you have 15 seconds for this one, okay? The card is Take a Seat, Young Skywalker. Your 15 Take seconds a seat, young starts Skywalker. now. All right, so that's the... I lost my sound, that's the, so That's the JCC puller. Mm -hmm. uh, One, I, I do feel answer. like... I do feel like I remember this was something funny with Anakin. Uh, but I don't remember... I have no idea. But I think it was something funny with Anakin. <clears throat> the correct answer know. is... I fail. Wars not make one great. Uh, yeah. I knew I wasn't going to get this right. Unless you asked me what, like... Unless it was like Stormtrooper Patrol. That? <laughs> <laughs> or, or Sidious. I was like... <laughs> I was doing... I mean, everybody knows what those are. <laughs> like but yeah and uh so oh uh just as a quick reminder uh everybody make sure you get your subscriptions going uh for all your pc stuff uh if you want all those cool foils including the uh, uh the Degaba yoda's hut foil uh all that just for subscribing you get cool foils yeah twitch foils uh, are great 
If you're waiting for a sticker token, well, you know what? I don't think we should do one tonight. Good night, everybody. I'm I'm joking. Uh, (laughs) So being that Justin won Tatooine Regionals, you get to pick the sticker sticker token for the night. Uh, Justin was saying, Justin said he lost his sound in the chat, so he might not be able to hear you asking him for it. Oh, wow. Okay, David, you give us a a card. Um, Actually, you know what? Why don't we just go with your shirt? Oh, yeah, there you go. Anything, so. Oh, we got you now. Yeah, I think he's just saying he can't hear us. Yeah. Time for I like the shirt. Fall of a legend. There you go. There's your token. Go for it. So your toker, uh, your toke, your sticker token for tonight is follow the legend. Uh, I will be working on uh, getting out the next list to Jared here, probably this week to next week. Uh, depends on work and everything. So uh, we'll get those out soon. Hopefully, we'll get those out around worlds uh, in time for worlds, so that way people can go to worlds with all their fancy foils. So, uh, Jared's in the chat, so, I mean, but he's not confirming anything I'm just saying. So, I'm making promises that Jared can't keep, apparently. <laughs> uh, so, and, uh, so, yeah. But that's all. The cutoff is 9-1. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying, Jared. So, we'll get those out in time for Worlds. <laughs> so, uh, that's all we have for tonight. So, uh, I want to say, again, thank you to uh, Justin and David for coming on. And uh, next week, I'm hoping to have Brad Kipple on to talk about his OCS and uh, all the stuff he's been doing lately. Uh, And then in two weeks, we'll talk a little bit about the European. uh, We'll talk about the European Championship. So we'll talk that and uh, hopefully we'll have the European Champion uh, on in a couple weeks. And uh, we'll have maybe we'll have the Yavin 4 regional winner on if I go. (laughs) <laughs> so but again thanks everyone for tuning in uh make sure you guys like subscribe follow the pc for all things star wars ccg related and until next week as always uh take care enjoy your weekend and as always may the force be with you good night everybody